Okay, so what's all this lot for then? <clears throat> well, after the successful use of the 775 DC motor, this little matey here on the mini drill press, um, I actually bought two at the time, they're so cheap. That, um, they, they really are amazing value for money. I thought, what else can we use it for? So I had in my mind, um, it might be powerful enough to drive a bench saw. And I thought, well, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, it, the bench saw will put a much heavier load on the motor than the, than the drill press does. So I had to think about it and I decided to go down the, um, I'm not gonna drive the saw directly from the motor. I'm gonna use a uh, <coughs> counter shaft, and, uh, which uh, was, uh, this is one of those uh, spindle kits that um, uh, Rob from Zanudu and um, Steve Jordan did reviews on. Uh, so I bought one of those. Um, <clears throat> I bought a couple of hanger bearings. This is all available from Banggood and I'll put links in the description. Um, this is the uh, arbor which holds cutting discs like that one, or grinding discs, and the tooth belt pulley kit. Um, so the idea is that this will be mounted on the underside of this bit of aluminium alloy plate. Um, <clears throat> and um, that's about as far as we got with it. Um, I'm fairly certain that I'll probably need to power it from 36 volts because it's gonna require maximum amount of power, I think, to drive the blade uh, to do any cutting. Now, I'm not even sure whether it will be man enough for it, but, you know, this is this is all very, very cheap, all of this. It doesn't cost very much at all. Um, and all the rest of it is just scrap that I had lying around. So we'll, we'll, we'll bolt it all up together and, um, and, and we'll see if it'll, it'll do the job. Well, there's the basic setup. 775 DC motor mounted on the bracket. You get this, the bracket comes from uh, Banggood as well. We've got the tooth belt pulleys in place. The counter shaft is now mounted on the hanger bearings. So to bear in mind, uh, I've discovered um, if you're gonna use these hanger bearings, um, in order for the tooth belt pulley to clear underneath once it's got the belt on, um, you need to uh, space these out very slightly. So I've got some thick washers underneath the, 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 the bearing hangers. But uh, yeah, that's the basic uh, setup. So we'll try it with my, uh, I'm gonna use my battery box here to power it just temporarily, but yeah. So there you, you get the basic, you get the basic setup. Um, what I need to do as well is uh, once I get a disc on it is I will probably uh, do some RPM checks to see just sort of that's, that's on 24 volts, that's about halfway. And that's flat out. So, yeah, so we need to do some RPM checks on it. But I think, as I said, I'm probably gonna run it on 36 volts when I actually finally get the, the thing set up. So, uh, so we're getting there. Okay, here's the underside now with the blade mounted. Um, I've put the wooden side pieces on, um, so we should have clearance, um, and we're all set, ready to do some RPM tests. Something I forgot to mention earlier as well, these hanger bearing mounts have got a very strange hole size. As far as I can tell, it's seven mil, which is unusual. Now I've used quarter UNC bolts to secure it, but obviously that's, you know, there's there's still a little bit of slop in, 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 in there. Um, but why they picked seven mil is, well, quite bizarre. Right, let's flip it up and we'll do some RPM checks. Well, straight away you can see a problem. Uh, I, I already knew about this. Unfortunately, the arbor, uh, which fits on the end of the counter shaft, the thread on the clamp is twisted. Um, so, although I've, I've tried a bit of packing to try and level it out, but unfortunately, um, I'm gonna to have to get another one because it's just it just won't line up straight. So we're gonna have a check on this and see what the RPM is. Yeah, that seems to be reading okay. Yeah, so let's wind it up. Right, I'm getting just under Just over 3,200. Yeah, about 
3,200. Which is, which is probably, that's on 24 volts and that's flat out on the, um, on the speed control, which is what I, 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 I suspected. So yeah, we're definitely gonna have to up the, up the voltage. So I think what I'll do is I'll try running it on a bench supply and see how we go the, from, from there. Okay, well, to get an accurate reading, I've had to blue the um, rest of the blade so that the only reflective surface is the, is the actual sticker. Um, and uh, on the battery box, 24 volts flat out, I'm getting about 2,900 RPM. So I've now got it connected up to my bench supply, which only goes up to 30 volts, but at least it will give us some idea. And um, let's see what we've got. Yeah, so that's that's at 30 volts, 3,900. So we're well within the range. The blade is rated up to 8,000. So I think we can safely say that we can go up to, um, I would say 36 volts quite easily. So I think I'll go for a 36 volt power supply for it. Um, but while we've got it connected to the bench supply, I suppose we might as well see whether it will actually cut anything. So we're going to start with a bit of strip wood. Just try that. Yeah, well, there was obviously no problem with that whatsoever. Let's try something a bit bigger. Yeah, well, it did it okay. Um, it started to draw a lot more current, obviously, when it was uh, cutting into the bigger bit of wood, but it just shows you that it will do it. Um, so um, I think, yes, I think the next thing is to source a 36 volt, reasonably high current power supply for it. And um, obviously you also need an on off switch, NVR preferably. And I need to make some sides for it and a, and a, and a vent for um, uh, dust extraction. But uh, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's, it's definitely a, a goer.